Hello you all, I am Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Back by popular demand, I am doing another story on the Orisha. And today we are doing the story of Ogun. Before we get into the video, y'all know I have to give a few disclaimers. Number one, if I sound a little bit like Ogun, that's because I had to get up at 5 a.m. this morning to film this video before I go to work. And this is like my first time talking since this morning. So just wanna, you know, my voice will regulate throughout the video. Also, I say this at the beginning of every one of my videos. This may not be the story that your elder told you. This may not be the story your grandmama told you, but these are one of the many stories that are being told. So if you heard a different version, just think of this as a new teaching and tell me down below the version that you heard so we could all learn together, okay? But before we get into the video, let's get into the crystal of today. The crystal of the day is the Lepidolite. I like to call this moon nuggets and it release and remove all dysfunctional behavior and psychological patterns and gently introduce an overall change. Experience deep emotional healing and a new stress-free, happier life. And you can get this moon nugget here from blackwitchyaya.com. Also throughout this story, you may hear me reference some things in the English version. That's just simply because I speak English and I'm sure you guys speak English too. So it'll be easier for us both to understand. So let's start with the story of Ogun. So in the beginning, Oriana married Tabatu. I feel like I just added to that name. But Oriana married Tabatu and together they made a son by the name of Toby Odi. Toby Odi translates to the skilled hunter. We'll dive deeper into the aspect of him being a skilled hunter later on in the video and even more deeper in a separate video. But just know he was the first to make the journey from the invisible realm to earth. So the Orisha that followed behind him discovered that earth was really packed with trees, grass, forests, just bushes everywhere. So Abatala came along and decided, you know what, I'll make a path through the forest, I got y'all. So he took a silver cutlass and he began slashing trees, slashing bushes, making a clear path so him and the other Orisha can follow along. But eventually his cutlass became very dull, bent out of shape, it wasn't cutting anything, it was just tapping it and dragging it. So it became no good and it was no longer working. So during this journey, Toby O.D. was able to discover the mystery of iron. So in this predicament that they were in, he was able to make a machete for translation of machete. And with that machete or sword, he was able to slash his way through the forest and make a clear pathway for the other Orisha. The other Orisha were so grateful for this. They were like, oh my gosh, Toby, you so strong, Toby. You did the thing, Toby. So with them being so proud and so grateful, they gave him the title of first among the mortals. So with with the proud work that he's done from that day, Toby O.D. became Ogun, which translates to the spirit of iron because he discovered the mystery of iron, the secret of iron. So he became the spirit of iron. Along with that, the Orisha were so grateful as well, they gave him another title, the first among the immortals. So you would think in that situation, someone would be so proud, so happy, so bashful, like, oh, stop it. But actually, Ogun was like, Eh, I mean, all right, cool. I mean, eh. he wasn't pleased. He was just like, okay, I mean, I guess. He was not pleased with the title of the chief of spreading the earth. He was like, I'm gonna just go up here and live on the mountains. Y'all can have that. I'm gonna go up here. Like I told y'all in my previous videos, Ogun was very socially awkward. So you would think that someone would be like, yeah, I'm the king. I did that. Call me chief. But he was like, I'm gonna live in the mountains. All right, thank y'all. So let's pause the story right here. Y'all know I like to do check-ins. Y'all good? Y'all okay? Okay, cool. And I also wanted to make a correlation. If you get a visual representation of what was going on with clearing the path, every time I watch like a sci-fi movie or a scary movie and someone's like stranded in the jungle and they have to like slash through the bushes, basically scenes like that, you can imagine Ogun doing that once he discovered the mystery of iron, helping the other Orisha that followed along behind him be able to navigate through Earth. So we're going to get into the first little story of of Ogun so I think I'm going to cover I have so many I'll probably do three and then we'll save the rest for a different video in this first story Ogun was living in the mountains and he decided that he wanted to take a visit to the valley he made him some clothes out of palm fronds and he went along his way so in the first town he stopped in he immediately got to work he helped the people there fight off their enemies so you know he was good at making a path removing your obstacles so at that moment the enemies in that valley in that town were the obstacle of the townspeople so he helped them fight them off so he didn't even get to say hey how you doing he immediately went down there and he began swinging 
So continuing his long journey, he stopped in another town. Mind you, he just helped this other town fight off their enemies. So he was still covered in blood, clothing soil, just real fresh out of battle. So in the next town he stopped in, the townspeople saw him and they were like, who is this? Get out of here. We don't want you here because they viewed him as someone scary and as an enemy. From there, Ogun went to the water to cleanse himself. And then the townspeople realized as he was cleaning himself, oh shoot, that's Ogun. We just tried to kick out Ogun. No, Ogun, we sorry. We sorry. They tried to apologize to beg him to stay because they realized like that's our chief. We do apologize. But Ogun was like, no, I'ma go now. Like y'all done kick me out. I don't wanna be here no more. And also because he did not want the title as chief. So he went back to the forest where he lives alone and dances to himself to this day. We're gonna pause right here again before we get into the next story because I really wanted to dissect the fact of what was going on. So as you guys will learn throughout this video, Ogun was a hard worker. His main goal is to remove every obstacle that gets in people's way to achieve a goal prevents them from getting something done so in one spiritual journey if they feel like they have any obstacles that they are encountering where whether internal or external you will call on Ogun to remove those obstacles so of course within battle the enemy is your obstacle from achieving your goal so he removes out the enemy so that's why when he got to the town he kind of already knew what to do so one of the most famous tales or pot of keys of Ogun is as follows and this really shows the characteristics of the children of Ogun and really teaches a lot of lessons. So here we go. So Ogun was walking through the forest one day. Ogun saw a group of his god children laughing, talking, having a good time. So he just got done with this long journey. He's sore, he's tired, he's thirsty. So he was like, let me stop and ask them for something to drink. So he walked over to the group of his god children. He asked them like, hey, may I have something to drink? He reached out his hand. They basically looked at him and they laughed. They just giggled. So in this moment, what do you think Ogun did? Being Ogun, what do you think he did? Was he bashful and shy like, okay, sorry. Or why are you laughing at me? Or did he kill them? He killed them. Ogun immediately drew his sword and he beheaded them. Every single one of them. So once he was done, he looked at his work, he was satisfied. So he reached down for a bottle of palm wine and realized it was empty. Okay, he tossed that one to the side. He reached for another one and realized that was empty too and so on and so forth. Every bottle was empty. So then at that moment, he realized they weren't laughing at me. They just didn't have anything to offer. So he was immediately embarrassed and ashamed of what he did. So he fell to his sword and he rose to heaven. Now, throughout research and stories that were told to me, I was told not to take this part literal because he didn't actually fall to his sword like as if committing suicide. One is to think of this as symbolism of some fact and when you fall to your sword, you kick yourself in the foot. There's also another part of key saying that he ran down to a hole where he left a chain. Now that will be covered in another video because I want to correlate that chain with DNA and genetics. So I want to really break that down so that will be in part two. But for this part that I'm telling you, it is saying that he fell to his sword. Basically, we could think of this as kicking yourself in the foot, feeling embarrassed, walking with your tail between your legs, something of that sort. And there's also another story of Ogun when he realized that he killed his own town people. That would be covered in part two as well. So basically, all of these correlate to him just feeling ashamed of what he did and reacting too quickly. So one of the many aspects of Ogun is truth. So in this story, we're going to learn about making truths, making fairness, and also where he has learned that his gift will bring him many gifts along with it. So one day after eating a roasted yam that he was advised to eat, many of y'all know that part of the story already, but we'll fast forward to this part. So he was eating a roasted yam and he grew thirsty. I realized that through a lot of stories, Ogumbi thirsty dog, like Ogumbi wants on the drink. So while drinking his water, he heard two men arguing. He looked up and he saw that they were arguing over a fish that they caught. So Ogun just told him, hey, go home and share the fish. But one man explained, I come from the east. And the other man explained, I come from the west. So at that moment, we realized east and west, fair balance in between. Let's continue with the story. So Ogun drew his sword again, 
but for this time, good. He split the fish in half and he gave one man from the eastern end and one man from the western end. So the first man was so grateful and so appreciative. He asked the goon, hey, may you also clear a path for me in the forest? And if you do this, I'll be sure to enrich your life. I'll give you valuable things that will gain you confidence. The other man as well requested the same and Ogun did so. So within those two stories, we realize the power of Ogun's weapons and he's also over weapons in modern day society as well. In those two stories, we realize he could use it for good, he could use it for bad, whichever way the situation leads. In the first story, he beheaded people. In the second story, he was splitting the fish in half to make truth. So also in the term of confidence that the first man referred to, this story basically explains how his sword is able to gain him confidence because he's able to do for others, help others, protect others, and remove obstacles. And that's the base of his confidence being a hard worker. So many children of Ogun are very hard workers. They like being busy. Usually these are the type of people that will not retire to sandy beaches here in Florida. They'll be like, okay, I'm retired. Let me start on something else. They really like being busy, like just doing stuff. They can't sit still. They're constantly working hard. Whatever they put their mind to is going to get done. It's going to get done correctly. They're very driven people. And also we learned in the first story and in the second story as well, many people look to Ogun to clear a pathway. And, and that's one of his main talents, his main things that he goes governs over and what he is mainly used for and known for. He's known to remove obstacles, to get things out of the way. Like I mentioned before, people in their spiritual journey and spiritual growth, anything that may be, may be in your way, any people that may be in your way, Ogun will remove them and they'll just disappear. Also, if you feel like in life you're faced with many obstacles and you're just always facing a hurdle, something is always stopping you, many people in this situation will call upon Ogun to remove those obstacles out the way so they can continue working working hard to their goal. Also, this correlates to the fact that in any spell work, any ritual, any manifestation, you cannot do it without Ogun because if anything is trying to get done, you have to make sure it's a clear pathway so you will call on Ogun to clear that pathway. So this is why Eshu and Ogun, see I think I might have to do Eshu next since I mentioned him. I like to keep a story. But this is why Eshu and Ogun kind of work hand in hand because Eshu will open a door for you while Ogun will clear the pathway. Ogun is the god of iron, truth, and courage. Also warfare, blacksmiths, anyone that does anything with their hands involving metal, the industrial industry, that's all Ogun. And this also could correlate to our everyday life, to the Uber driver, to the truck driver, to the mechanics, to the locksmith. Everybody that deals with their hands, deal with metal, deal with iron, deal with transportation, all falls under Ogun, especially technology. I, the industrial industry, technology, mechanics, that's all Ogun. Also, just a side story, this makes me think of when I was in pre-K before I knew anything about the Orisha, I had a teacher, Miss Mamaris, and she, we were learning how to type. Why was I learning how to type in pre-K? I was in a private school, asked my parents. So I was learning how to type in pre-K and I remember they we had a technology section and it was the green section and my teacher referred to it as go to the Ogun and type your little um story up or go to the Ogun, go to the Ogun. She called that green area where we learn how to type, work the computer, do our little floppy disk and all that. She called it the Ogun. So now when I was learning about him, I was like, oh. My, my teacher was up on game, okay. So that was just a side story. When you continue to learn about the Orisha, you will realize like later on in life when you think back like, oh, so this meant this or this meant that or this meant this. So anywho, going back to Ogun. So Ogun is also the governor over technology. That's why they say that he is constantly at work every single day and he is constantly working because as technology grows, as the industrial industry grows, Ogun is at work. So he is always needed. He's always a part of our everyday life from us driving to and from our destinations, getting a ride from someone, using our phone, using the computer, going to take our car to the shop. That's all governed by Ogun. So they say that anybody that's in that field should always give thanks to Ogun and ask for his guidance as well. Also some advice for children of Ogun, it is bad if y'all keep y'all emotions to yourself and y'all are good at that. You like to bury up your emotions, always not even anger. It could be sadness. If you're really happy about something, you'll be like, yay. But you really won't show too much emotion. It can be grievances, it can be loss, all emotions you really just like to keep them to yourself. And it's important that you get them out somehow, some way, talking through somebody, talking to somebody, writing just to get the emotions out. Because if you keep letting those get buried, 
we see what Ogun is capable of. So if you're a ch child of Ogun, make sure you're expressing your emotions some type of way instead of just keeping them bottled up. If you gotta have some pillow talk with your wife, tell her about your day, just get it off your chest. Say it with your chest. Ogun is furious but kind, and he's also been betrayed a countless numbers of times. The children of Ogun may have noticed that they have constantly been betrayed by people, whether it's in relationship, whether it's with family members, you kind of feel used and abused. But through all of that, he still gives us the strength to remain within self-reflection, to have courage, to have truth, to have power, to continue on and to remove those obstacles. Ogun is represented by the color green. Also, you guys, when I mentioned before about the forest, the jungle having a clear pathway, y'all see the background always matching the theme somehow, some way. His symbol is the machete or the sword, but he could also be represented by iron and rooster feathers. He governs the root chakra and his feast day is June 29th. In modern day time, so in today's day, Ogun governs over all transportation, all mechanics, all technology, all industrial industries, so factories, and all things that fall under that category. So in modern day time, Ogun is over all forms of transportation, iron, metal, industrial industry, and also surgery as well. At the core of Ogun's Ashe is a slow, steady willingness to do whatever it takes to remove obstacles, especially in one's spiritual journey, to remain focused in all other needs to complete a task. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first part of the story of Ogun. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Let me know what Orisha I should cover next. I'm thinking as shoe. Anytime I mention an Orisha in a video, I like to just keep it going in a pattern. Like in my Yemaya video, I mentioned Oshun. In my Oshun video, I mentioned Oya. In my Oya video, I mentioned Shango. In my Shango video, I mentioned Ogun. In my Ogun video, I mentioned Eshu. So that might be next. But anywho, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Like I always say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Until next time, you guys, I shave, baby. So we're going to talk about the relationship between Ogun and Oshun. So one day Ogun grew tired of all the work that he was doing in the forest, so he decided to run away. So he decided to run away deep, deep, deep in the valley into a different part of the forest. And then he seen this beautiful goddess dancing, a very steady sway, a very natural rock and rhythm, and he was immediately mesmerized by her beauty.